we're back in my bathroom welcome i showered and then was like this should be a video but we're gonna do my uh performing femininity routine so is it a get ready routine yes Am I being a dick because every time I get ready I feel some sort of guilt as a feminist like I shouldn't be getting ready but I can't detach the fact that I like doing it and I don't know how much of it is because I grew up in a patriarchy and how much of it is because I actually enjoy doing it and I'll never be able to know that because I did not exist in a vacuum. Yes, but uh, just out of insecurity I'm calling it my performing femininity routine because <sighs> I don't always do it but uh, when I want to feel Pretty and feminine, this is what I do. So, first, I'm naked. First I do my skincare. If you're looking for recommendations on all these things, go somewhere else, because uh, I refuse to talk about brands at the moment, because, because who fucking cares? I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm not a dermatologist. And also my skin is like this, so like I feel like people are like, am I like rushing through this? Oh, because I feel like my camera's about to die. Don't forget the net. I've got way too much. You guys were distracting me. Okay, eye cream. I'll tell you the type of product, but not like the brand name. I'll tell you the make, but not the model. If there are any car people watching. That was just serum, moisturizer, and eye cream. Now for hair. Hair oil. This is gonna seem blasphemous to most people, but I have such a dry scalp that I focus the oil on the top of my hair. Should I have shaved since I'm performing femininity? Probably. Maybe I will. Maybe that'll be the next part of this video. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Why not? I love playing around with my hair, my body hair, because like, and trying to find what I like best, and that whole like, I didn't exist in a vacuum, I don't know if I actually prefer myself hairless or not. I like play around with it a lot. So I'll like grow it out and then I'll shave it and then I'll grow it out again. And then I'll like shave one leg just to be quirky. All right, I actually fucked up normally. I put my leave-in before I put in my hair oil, but like I said, you guys are very distracting, so I didn't do it properly. I put that all throughout my hair. Really massage the shit in to the scalp. I know some of you are like, don't do that. Especially if you have oily hair, but I don't, so. I hope my titty doesn't pop out at some point. All right, now I'm gonna blow dry it. I'll actually turn this off while I blow dry my hair because I'm just rough drying it when I'm doing anything interesting other than rough drying, I'll come back. Okay, now that my hair is like 80% dry, is the fun part. Now get your vel Velcro rollers, and you have to prepare the Velcro rollers because we move fast in this household. So I'm doing green and yellows today. I'll come back when I've got them sorted. Okay, I have to admit something. Um, yesterday I came out of a dissociative episode and instantly decided to give myself the Rachel haircut. So I still don't know exactly how I'm styling it, but I am trying, and that's what matters. So um, first, if you want hair like mine, you're gonna need to drop, drop cash, and then and I'm just gonna do this and curl my hair and uh, I'll come back to you when it's done because I don't do it any differently from anything else you're gonna find on the internet I'm not gonna lie. I finished my hair like 10 minutes ago, and then I couldn't find my jewel So I was running around looking for my jewel. Why does it look like I have a unibrow? I mean because I have a Neanderthal unibrow bone. Am I proud of the fact that I vape? No. Am I addicted to nicotine? Yes, so Glad we got that out of the way. Next thing on the docket, I am wearing a kimono, an actual kimono, not like a bathroom made to look like a kimono, a true, genuine, 100% silk kimono from Japan that I do wear as a bathrobe. My grandma got it when she visited eons ago, I guess, and then she died and my mom took it and then I found it in my mom's closet and I said, mm, that's mine. So yes, uh, I'm, I'm sorry but it's 100% silk. As my friend would say, am I the problem? No. Am I part of the problem? Yes. I'm, I'm, I am sorry. I feel like if I just didn't mention anything, I could get away with people just thinking it's like a really similar style robe. But if you see that orange thing in the back, that's literally the like tie that goes around the middle. We've spent too much time on my cultural appropriation. Makeup time. Again, I'm not gonna tell you what I use. I'm like sweating. Did I put skincare on? Yeah, I did. Okay, primer. I'm into like a silicone primer. Personally, because I have huge fucking pores. And then, so this is like my everyday makeup. This is what I do every fucking time I put makeup on. And then I do a glow thing that goes under your foundation. We all know which one it is, but I'm, I'm refusing to mention it by name. This is not about products. 
this is just about the routine I use. Although wouldn't that be just another part of performing femininity, talking about the brands you use, you know? Because, God, I wish I had. Because the men of our civilization have stripped themselves of the fineries of the earth so that they might work more freely to plunder the universe for treasures to deck my lady in. New raw materials, new processes, new machines are all brought into her service. My lady must therefore be the chief spender as well as the chief symbol of spending ability and monetary success. So wouldn't that just be feminine, the, the feminine ideal to tell you about all the brands and all the money I spend? Except if I'm the one spending my own money, then where does that leave me? All right, and then foundation. Do I wanna do like a full foundation or do I wanna do a skin tone? We're gonna do full foundation because women don't have flaws. Women don't have acne. Women are perfect, but you have to make sure that if you are using foundation, it's not cakey because then you're gonna get in trouble for being fake. So you're walking a fine line here between cakey makeup and inherent femininity. Yes, yes, beautiful. And now, because that doesn't really get rid of all of my imperfections, we have to go in with concealer. I use two different types of concealer because one is good for face, acne, and the other is good for your under eye bags because as women, we need our beauty rest. And if we don't get our beauty rest, we must bake it. But God forbid we're perceived as being lazy or not having hobbies. So I don't know, we're supposed to look like we get enough sleep, but also be doing everything a man is doing now. Yeah, second wave feminism really fucking fucked us, didn't they? I love this scene in, um, in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, like the first scene, basically where she, well, it's in the first episode, that scene in the first episode where she's like, goes to sleep in her makeup, and then once her husband falls asleep, she gets up and like does her night cream and all of the sort of things that you have to do to be able to look so flawless that you're not supposed to allow your husband to see to like keep the mystery alive and make him think you just like wake up beautiful. And then she like opens the shutter of her window just a crack because where the sun hits in the morning in that crack happens to be right into her eyes so it wakes her up before her husband and then she takes off all of her night cream and all of her serums and stuff and everything she went to bed in which was like her rollers and a mask and stuff she takes it all off takes her hair down and puts on like no makeup makeup and then closes the shutter so that or the blind so that her husband doesn't know that she did it and then the alarm goes off and then he wakes up and he's like oh my god you're still asleep you're asleep this whole time and that i think is just the epitome of performing femininity i think that is just ingenue you know i don't know what that word means almost forgot my under eye concealer make sure it looks like i slept if i were really going for my entire femininity routine i would also do a hair mask face mask but um those aren't it's not this isn't the day you know there's a schedule because if you do too many masks and too many hair masks then you end up actually doing worse you have to have a calendar i literally have it in my calendar to keep track of the last time i used my masks that and just like your ability to sort of know where your skin's at and be like mm, my skin's looking like it needs a little tlc and there's so many sort of unspoken things you don't even think about but you just sort of know like when it's time to put on a face mask or when it's time to you know perform some sort of what they call self-care which is just the new branding for the chokehold the patriarchy has on us and then i'm using my fingers god forbid i didn't buy another product any sarcasm you're hearing it's not at any one so if you like use brushes or stuff like that's it's not about you it's about capitalism my beef is with capitalism not with you god if any like uber conservatives trickle find run across this they're gonna be like what the fuck am i watching you gotta make sure you don't have a line because that's how they clock you that's how they know you're wearing makeup because you have to wear makeup but they don't want to know you're wearing makeup you know so god forbid you have a line or everything's not the exact right shade because they have so much knowledge about these things like how easy it is to find the perfect foundation shade that also matches your skin needs now they just get to sit on the sidelines what is that saying the best critic cri best critics are the worst artists or whatever critics are there's a reason they're a critic and not an artist and then blush i use cream products because again my skin it probably looks all right on camera I have very textured skin, so cream products tend to just sit on my skin a little better. Also very dry skin. It just, it, it works for me. You want to make sure you take your blush and put it on the top of your cheekbones and bring it up to give yourself a facelift because 
The goal apparently is to look underage. That is what you are trying to do to attract male validation is to look like you're not your age. Have the wisdom, actually they sort of want you to have the wisdom of someone underage too because they don't realize that you actually have the power in choosing who you want to procreate with and choosing which traits you want to pass on to the next generation and the younger you are the less you realize how much power you truly do have in the dynamic and so that's why they want them young and it's easier to take advantage of them it's also so interesting seeing myself in velcro rollers because my mom used velcro rollers there's such a like need for me to not be anything like my mother any of her things she did in the beauty routine which do work for me too because i have so many traits similar to her but it's like i don't want to do them because i'm like oh this reminds me of my mom and i love my mom but yes this book is outdated and yes there are some absolutely bad takes in this book but there's listen to this hold on i'm gonna find this and then i'll be back okay i can't find the quote and now i'm wondering if i actually like saw it online it was about specifically how one of the reasons we hate our mothers is because in femininity you want to keep your youth and so mothers have inherently failed because they're aging and so anything they're doing in their beauty routine are things like we unconsciously are like i'm gonna avoid that because that means i'm aging okay i found the quote it's actually in the beauty myth yes both of these books are sort of more towards second wave feminism i'm very much in the early stages of learning about feminism and the literary format like reading about feminism so i thought i'd start at least with the foundation yes i am privileged because a lot of what is spoken about in these books is very applicable to me and my sort of station in life so the quote that I was talking about is in The Beauty Myth. She is taught to dismiss her own mother's teaching about beauty, adornment, and seduction since her mother has failed. She has aged. So like me putting rollers in my hair, like my mom did when she was in her 30s is making me think like, oh my God, I'm aging. And even though I've done so much unlearning, it still has this instinct of like, fuck, I'm turning into my mom. We're gonna continue on with my makeup. Fuck, I do need a brush for this one. All my brushes are so dirty. Alright, moving on to the brows. I go for quite a heavy brow, which is still sort of in style, but also I think even when it's out of style, I'll still be doing it just because I do have a thicker brow. And then I fill them in however they want to be filled in. I made it sound like my brows are the ones like dictating to me how to look. Maybe they are. Maybe it's not the patriarchy's fault. Maybe it's all my brows' fault. Am I making sense? No. You might be asking yourself, why are you doing this video? Why Why does it matter? It doesn't for anyone except for myself. I am in a constant battle with myself over like whether I should get ready for a video or just be in my natural resting place. And then I feel self-conscious and I'm like, I look ugly. It's not that I look ugly, it's that I'm not performing femininity. And so this is basically me being like, no, like I know how to look attractive. I'm. It's a choice not to look what society would perceive as attractive for a woman. So am I still playing into it by doing this? Yes, but you know, I do do dialectical behavioral theory, ther theory? therapy, and um, have learned to accept both sides, which is that I am a feminist, that I don't wanna do things just because society told me I should do them, yet I still have an intense desire to do things because society tells me I should do them. All right, moving on to the eyes. This is my favorite part. I don't have eyelids. So uh, I just take a crease color and sort of throw it around. This chica is all brow. I literally put it all the way up to my brow bone just to sort of bring my brow bone back a little bit. I'm definitely into a more natural makeup look. Not no makeup makeup. No makeup makeup and natural makeup are two very different things. As you can tell by the 18 products I'm putting on my face. Since we're really prepared to come in, maybe I'll put some glitter on my eyes just to remind people. Be like, no look, I'm a woman. No look, look at me. Look at me being a woman. I have glitter on my eyes. I'm a woman. They don't get copyrighted. That shrink doing the snow. Oh, I gave it away. Hey. I'm having a mental breakdown. I 
did do a manic cutting my hair yesterday, so. Oh, maybe. I'm oh, getting off my way. I'm not gonna put false lashes on, by the way. Should I, like, should I wear an outfit where it's like I'm going on a date? Or should I wear an outfit where it's like this is what I would wear on a daily basis? It doesn't matter whether I'm going on a date or just hanging out. This is like the makeup look I do. Like this is just my universal makeup look. I tend not to fuck with it too much. So I could do both. Maybe I will do both. Maybe I'll be like here's what I would wear. This is what I look like when my hair is a little wet, but not all wet. Here's what it looks like when it's wet wet. What is happening to me? Lastly, lips. Lips I'm very self-conscious about for a couple reasons. I used to like my lips until big lips became a thing and now I have like average like they're not they're not small but compared to what most people are doing nowadays they're tiny so I get very self-conscious about them so I do I don't overline them but I do like define them and try to at least play up in sort of doll like vibe of them I do overline the bottom a little bit just because I have a really weird bottom Lip. All right, and then I put on a plumping gloss. I feel snow. I'm go. the way. <laughs> Truly, I don't know if I'm okay. Okay, that's my makeup. For some reason, it always looks crazy raccoon-like on camera, but it doesn't look like that in person. But since this is really for the camera, I'll try to diffuse the raccoonish of this. It really doesn't look raccoony on in person. It looks so raccoony. I look like that fucking scene from The Favorite. You look like a badger. Actually, every time I see that scene, I think it's like a personal attack on me and the way I do my makeup. I'm not gonna lie. This hurts. This fucking hurts. This really hurts. Does that do anything? Okay, so now it's time to take the hair down. I don't want to go back in the hall because there are construction workers like right outside my door and I don't want them to hear me having a mental breakdown, aka getting ready. So I'm gonna take my curlers out here. Bells on pop just ring. Could jingle bells get copyrighted or is that like, what is it called? Fair use? You pretending like I know anything about copyright? Jingle bell, jingle My lips are on fire. All right, you know before when I was like, I'm gonna do both a date night outfit and a normal outfit. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna put on one outfit and that'll be the outfit I wear for the day. I'm not gonna want to change again. I just do not have it in me. Oh my god, just ripping out my hair. Is that my last roller? It is. Do I look like Rachel? <laughs> that looked crazy. I mean, like it does. Like, I'm almost upset at how easy it was to give myself a Rachel haircut. If this does not look like season one Rachel, like Monica trying to do Rachel's hair, like it is a little bit more Monica. Maybe it's just cause it's like black, like hers, but. I'm gonna put deodorant on. I'm gonna get dressed. I don't care anymore. Hey! Now for the outfit. I really hate dressing femininely. Like the more feminine you dress, the less comfortable it is. Like if you really wanna like look like you're really performing femininity, it's so uncomfortable. You always have to be like sucked in and like standing up straight and like, even if the actual outfit isn't that bad, like the way you have to stand to perform femininity and like something tight fitting or showing off your body or the way like you're like constantly adjusting to make sure everything looks just right. Oh, it's so fucking obnoxious. So I'm gonna, I don't know, am I doing my version of performing for femininity or am I just performing femininity? That's the question, because it'll dictate how I choose my outfit. I've been looking at the viewfinder the entire time. Have not once looked in the actual camera. All right, I'm gonna figure it out and then I'll, L-Y-K. That means let you know. Okay, so this is what I came up with. Let me just explain. My version of femininity personally tends to be being technically conservative, like I don't like to show off my body too much. In terms of skin, I don't like showing off too much skin, but I do like the shape of my body. So it's like I'll wear a tight turtleneck and then have it so my bra is showing. So it's like a purposeful, it's like sexy, but I'm like wearing a mom jean and a turtleneck. So I, for me, it's just my sort of personal, the way I feel most comfortable with my femininity. It feels like it's a little more on my terms. I just don't feel comfortable in sexy shit. And I'm so jealous of women that do feel comfortable and like sexy and very revealing, a lot of skin showing shit. I just don't. And it probably has something to do with the fact that since I was 13, I've had this 
shape of body and have been perved on by 30 year old men from that time on and felt like it was my responsibility to cover myself up in order to not be objectified by 30 year old men. It's what I like to now call the Billie Eilish effect because she, you see, went through the same fucking thing. And now because of that, I'm like, really hate showing off my body because I feel like that's all people fucking notice when I have skin showing and I just don't like it personally. I literally look like Monica Geller. I literally am cosplaying Monica Geller. And then here, I'm just wearing some earrings. I normally wear rings, they're everywhere. They're all over my house, I don't know where they are in order to like put my rings on and like really feel fully myself, but. And then also I did, I will wear like my armpits aren't shaped, even though you can sort of see them through the shirt. So I'm wearing long pants. I almost wore a skirt and then I was like, my legs are hairy and that's not feminine. So this is what I look like. I'll probably wear like a combat boot or a sensible shoe, maybe a loafer with this. That's the video. That is my performing femininity daily routine. Get ready with me. Versus like a, I'm going all out, like I'm about to have coitus sort of performing femininity or like there's a important event. That would be a very interesting one. Like maybe, I don't really go to the extremes I used to go to if like there's something important that I wanna look nice for in the way like I used to like crash diet and do a lot of stuff that I refuse to do now. Now I just like sort of show up in whatever state I'm in. I went to my cousin's wedding in a beach cover up with one leg shaved. So. Clearly I don't give a fuck anymore about looking like a woman, but uh, that would be a fun video to do, to like show like the extent what truly goes into looking your best, your most feminine for an important event like prom or a wedding or a court sentence or a picnic. The night that you are getting engaged and you're pretending like you're surprised you're getting engaged but you know exactly what's happening. Okay, I'm gonna end off here. Hope you enjoyed my video. I'm so sorry. Bye.